Okay, all the way from Funstock, including a cap, we got the two new carts. But in this video, we're going to be looking at Intellivision Collection 2. Let's go. Okay guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Here we've got the new car um, in television collection to delayed a little bit from the end of May to sometime in June. Um, we've got 12 games on the car, so that's quite good value I guess. Um, obviously I quite enjoyed the first car, but I'm not really sure I'm totally excited for a second one. But it does have a few signature games that people are definitely looking out for, such as Tower of Doom, um, Cloudy Mountain, um, um, anyway, let's have a quick look inside the box. Whoa, we have some free freebies. Let's have a quick look at these. Now, this is a nice touch. Kind of reminds you, I guess, of the cars that you used to put inside the controllers to tell you what the buttons um, actually corresponded to. That's really nice. We've got two sides. Tells you what all the items um, for Tower of Doom is and what they actually mean. Which is quite cool because if you're playing the game, you really don't have much of a clue apart from the obvious ones. Then um, we've got some treasure stuff here. Magic items. Wow. Got one for Cloudy Mountain as well, and it tells you what all the, the different mountains mean. Um, yeah. Let's see what's on the other side of Cloudy Mountain. That's just more stuff. Your home starts with three quivers and arrows, your party. You can just about read that. Interesting. Hmm. Anyway, let's have a look at the, the cartridge as well. Oh, what? A kind of a bland looking funny not sure what colour you would call that kind of light brown and television colour <laughs> yeah nice car now let's have a look at the all important manual well, let's hope there's a little bit extra pages for some of these games that are in depth such as Cloudy Mountain and Tower of Doom a little bit about in television I don't think we'll go there too much but um, interestingly in television was a 16 bit machine which I only found about recently doesn't really look like a 16 bit. If you think 16 bit, you're thinking Mega Drives and Super Nintendos. Um, but yeah, it was definitely more powerful than the Atari 2600, which it was kind of a competing with um, back in the sort of late 70s and into the 80s. There's all your keypad tips. You press the L1 button to get the keypad on most of the games. Hopefully, I think some of the games have been changed so that you don't need to utilise that like Tower of Doom um, and Cloudy Mountain. Here's all the details about it. I love, I do love these manuals. There's a good few pages um, included for these games, which is good because there are a lot of things you really need to know. It's quite in-depth. Um, look how many levels there are on Tower of Doom, up to 32 levels, wow. You'll definitely need some um, save states. That, and this is some great depth for um, some older style games, which is quite impressive. I think this is probably going to be the, the game that people are most excited for, and probably Cloud the Mountain as well. Um, I think certainly these are aimed at those that grew up with an Intellivision. If you didn't, your interest might not be as much. Um, you might not really like the look of these. They are pretty old games, to be fair. Um, most of them from, from the 80s. But there are some decent titles here. I'm, I'm not saying they're all amazing, but there are some really good games to play. At least we've got 12 games to get our teeth stuck into. Hopefully they've sorted out some of the controls, because if you do emulate these games on other sort of systems, the controls are a right nightmare to actually play, and the games are not a lot of fun. So hopefully, I believe, Blaze have spent some time trying to make the controls uh, and make the games more playable. And probably more fun, but we'll find out I guess when we get it booted up We're going to get them booted up onto this soon, but first we'll get them booted up on this Okay guys here we go the cart already hooked up. We'll maybe jump into Tower of Doom just quickly Just to see it actually working on the handheld I'm trying to press the sort of shoulder buttons to bring up the keypad and you sort of Utilise that to select. Hopefully we use that at a minimum because it can be a little bit, a bit of a pain to play games like that. This one's certainly a little bit tricky. 
You just need to learn those controls, what buttons you need to press. But it's basically a dungeon crawler. Um, and I think this is probably the game I'll probably be most excited to actually play. And it does feel like the, the levels are completely randomly generated. I think that is actually the case, but which make, means it's different every time you play it. Um, obviously you need to utilise your sort of scrolling function here to open the doors. Oh, something like that. Oh, there's the door there, sorry, it appears now. And then you can open the door and go in. Oh, you can run away from these as well. <laughs> but yeah, anyway guys, that's it sort of working on the handheld. It seems fantastic. As I say, I'll probably play more of my games on the handheld. Um, especially for this, but we're going to have a look in the VS so that you guys can have a better look at the games in action. And I'll talk you through them and give you my thoughts as we go and my first impressions of these games. Okay guys, here we go, we've got the 12 games on the Evercade VS, which I suppose seems like reasonable value for money, they're 12 games. Um, so we've got Auto Racing, Cloudy Mountain, Hover Force, Motocross, Mountain Madness, Super Pro Skiing, Reverse, Sharp Shot, I need to say that uh, <laughs> carefully, um, Stadium, Stadium Mud Buggies, Star Strike, Super Pro Decathlon, Forest of Doom, sorry, Tower of Doom and Vectron. Anyway, let's get stuck into the first actual game. And this one's from 1980. So yeah, a lot of these games will look a little bit rough around the edges. Um, but I think the most people that had an Intellivision back in the day are probably going to appreciate. Two versions of auto racing were released into the market, blah blah blah. One with realistic steering and the one with intuitive steering. The one you have here is the realistic one. Oh. Important note here. You play a single player game, use keypad numbers 1 to 5, enter your chosen car. Now, interesting, um, the actual manual doesn't go into an awful lot of detail. Now, I looked at this game a few months back, and it does make a difference um, what colour of car you actually choose. Um, and there's a lot more to the game than the manual actually says. So even though we've got some great detail in the manual for Cloudy Mountain and Tower of Doom, there's a very lack of detail for the rest of the games on the cart. And a lot of the, if you look at the original manuals, for example, there's a lot of detail in there. Um, obviously, there's a fine line how much you can be in the, the Evercade manuals, but there's still a lot of information in there that we actually need to be able to play these games properly because there are a lot of control problems with some of these games. Anyway, without further ado, let's have a quick look at the controls. We've got brake, open keypad, the usual L1 and R1, and steer. Check manual, it tells you absolutely no more than what you see here. Okay, it even says 1979, even though it said 1980 at the start. Interesting. Okay, so what have we got? Select a course. So right away, you have to hold down the R L1 button. Choose a course. No idea what course I'm picking. Doesn't tell you in the manual, so what do I do? I don't know. Just choose course 1, then you press the enter button or E button. Select cars again, 1 to 5. It does make a difference. Obviously the, the colour of the car, I think, depends how fast or the handling of the car. I do not have a clue. So I'm just going to go for the red car, just because I don't know. And then just press the Y button, I guess, to get started. E button. Already we've got some kind of strange control issues that the game doesn't want to actually start. Pauses. Don't know. Very odd indeed. Anyway, here we go. We are actually started. And we're obviously the red car. But the controls don't actually do anything for me. Now, I don't know what I'm if I'm doing anything wrong. Switch between right and left controllers. Oh, look, there you go. So I switched to the... I press select to switch controllers, and now it's controlling. That is weird. So now we're actually going and controlling. The, the scrolling is really, really jerky as anything. Okay, I don't know if I've got patience to try and put up with this much longer, to be honest. So the controls it seems to respond okay, I guess, but I guess you need to break. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm going to move on because this game is just not going to happen for me. I'm not going to utilise my time trying to work out with these absolutely shocking controls. You can just have a look one more time about that. It does say, important note. 
So you have to then select to switch controllers. Why is that? So take note of that, guys. You need to press select. Obviously, you would have left uh, as your control, but then you need to select to switch controllers. What is going on there? That is bizarre. Remember to press select again to switch back before the race starts. Oh my god. I'm sorry, but that is just absolutely ridiculous. I'm, I'm not going with that. That's, that's just awful. Okay, guys, not really a good start there. That game is just totally uninspiring um, with crazy controls and handling issues. But let's move on to Cloudy Mountains. Hopefully we get some slightly better luck. Um, so this one is probably the one that a lot of people recognise. It was like a Dungeons & Dragons style game. But this has obviously not got all that licensing attached. Um, and I guess you need to try and beat the Winged Dragons of Cloudy Mountain to claim your prize. First in television adaption of, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons. Katie okay, says, your arrows are limited resource, so learn when it's best to sneak around monitors. Blah, 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 blah. So well, there's quite a lot depth to this game. Move up the map, shoot arrow up, move right, move down. So I guess they've tried to like code a lot of the keys that you would probably have been pressing the keypad for onto some of these buttons, so hopefully this works better. Not sure why you've got a pick up item onto the select button, perhaps just ran out of uh, viable options there I guess. But yeah, let's play the game, let's see what happens. From 1982, it's just called Adventure, but yeah, it's probably more commonly known as Cloudy Mountain. So, where do we go from here? So you've got maneuver, let me see. You can use the actual buttons to move your I don't know what that is, flashing boxes. Okay. Can you select that map to go in? How do we select? I have no idea. So I need to obviously go on top of it maybe. Okay guys, even just struggling to actually start. So exit cave, move left on the map and shoot arrow, move down in the map. Pick up item, move character, open cave, run button, open keypad. How do you actually start a game? Unbelievable. Okay guys, let's start that one again. So you use the buttons to start, start a control. And then I guess you need to find a mountain that you can actually enter. It's kind of unclear. Obviously that tells you in the what these blue things mean. So you've got your character. You can run by pressing the R1 button. Um, and then you've got some arrows you can actually shoot. And there's lots of enemies about here and there, I guess. Oh, here's some. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh. And you die pretty much instantly. Now, I definitely think this cart is going to be for the fans only. Um, that maybe had one, had an Intellivision back in the day and can actually appreciate it. For me... I just don't see the fascination in these games at all. Um, the the controls are absolutely hideously awful. I'm not really sure it's necessarily ever kid's fault, or I guess partially to blame. It's difficult to know what I'm supposed to be doing here, manoeuvring. Nothing's actually moving. Am I stuck? Do I, where do I go? Do I enter? Exit? None of the buttons correspond or do anything for me. So a bit of a frustrating experience so far. Controls are just horrific. And even, obviously, when you get into the game, I'm just finding the games completely uninspiring for me. Okay, guys, moving on to Hover Force. Not really the greatest start to this card. It does seem like there's a lot of control issues here and there. Um, I guess they're trying their best to try and map that keypad that was with the Intellivision to the actual um, controls on your Evercade. Um, and it does create a lot of complications, but so far for me, it's not really working very well. There's a lot more options here. You can see you've got um, air brakes, fire cannon, blah, blah, blah. So let's try and play this game. This one hopefully is a little bit better. Yeah, it's, a, it's a slightly later and more involved title uh, from 1986. Okay. Okay, so you use your keypad to choose what... Uh, level you want to be on. On this one I'm going to choose one which is Cadet and hopefully press enter. And again that's not totally clear what you're supposed to do there. This could certainly cause a lot of frustrations. Certainly one of the nicer games on the cart. Kinda gives a, a 
suppose, a kind of a jungle strike style game. But you've got this top down view from your helicopter. And there is a map. That's your map that you need to pay attention. I guess you need to put out fires and stuff that happen through the city. What we got? We've got a water cannon. And a f you've got fire. You can take out other enemies. You can see X is fire. Um, and then you've got water cannons. That's kind of interesting, I guess. So what are we supposed to do here? What is the actual point? Um, got the fuel, laser, H2O. I guess we need to just keep scrolling about till you find something you need to actually do. It. I think this one probably could be one of the better games on the cart. Um, once it actually gets going, it does seem to have a little bit of depth. I like the, the graphics, even though they are still a bit dated. Um, probably quite impressive, I think, for the time on it on an Intellivision. Um, but I'm sort of going through the game here and there's absolutely nothing happening. Not totally clear what I'm supposed to be doing, where I'm going. Um, is there any fires to put out? Check the map. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know what am I supposed to be doing? Oh, there's somebody I can take out. Ah. Oh. So we've got some enemies we need to actually take out. Let's see. Yeah, you got it. This one's, it kind of seems as if it would be actually alright to play, but it's not massively clear where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do. I guess you take out enemies, put out fires kind of thing, but it just seems a little bit of an aimless wonder, to be honest. Okay guys, we're moving on to Motocross, um, another sort of bike driving style game. There are a few in this cart, I kind of wonder why there's so many, um, but let's have a look at this one. Hopefully this one plays better than the last. Interesting. Okay, no extra tips there. We've got brake and accelerate. Hopefully it's as simple as that to play. Fingers crossed. Now here we go, motocross. You've got courses, standard, new. No idea what that means. Let's just pick one. Using your keypad. Oh, there you go. You can actually see what the, con the course looks like. Press E to enter. Number of laps? I do not know. Two. I love the, the sort of in-depthness that you have here. So you've got options using your keypad again to start, I don't know, let's go with a player versus comp. Oh my goodness, steering, directional, left and right, I do not know, left and right, I don't know. Ah, what? No! <laughs> Too many options, just let me play. Okay, here we go. It's supposed to Oh, oh, sorry, he's, the player's left me behind this. So I can't progress because I've not went yet. So I take it I'm the red one. Um, yeah, controls do seem a bit rubbish still. Um, they seem totally uh, um, unresponsive, to be honest. Graphics are pretty sort of awful for the day, but. Yeah, I don't know. So you press X to accelerate, and I've, I've got the sort of left and right set up so that I can turn my uh, bike round, but it, it just seems like it's running really slowly. And controls are very unresponsive. I'm, I'm not impressed at all here. Okay, guys, let's move on to Mountain Madness. Um, this cart is just madness, to be honest, but Super Pro Skiing, let's do it. I'm well aware this game has definitely got a lot of depth to it as well with the amount of different um, courses that you can actually create. There's the controls, get jump, jump, and more jump and turn. Okay, so let's have a bash at this from 1988. Doesn't seem that long ago, does it? No, it's 1987 it says here. Get your dates right, Blaze, come on. What year is it? Select the number of skiers, okay, six. <laughs> okay, press enter. Select flag style down. Oh, I don't care. I definitely don't like having to utilise this keypad. It really is a pain, but I guess there's not a lot of way uh, around it. Let's just choose the first course. I love there's lots of courses to choose here, so there is a bit of depth here. Slope. Oh, just whatever. <laughs> just get on with it. Yep. So let's do it. So what was the jump, ski, go. Hit the pad to go, yeah. What pad? Oh yeah, so the, the D-pad, what the heck? Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so we've got through it. So it seems to control. Okay, this one. Need to go through the flags, I guess. You got jump. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. So obviously, if you're pointing straight ahead, you will go faster. If you're going sort of slightly to the side, you'll go slower. You can sort of... Yeah, this one handles all right. Certainly got playability on it. Jump over the big dune there. Dune? It's not sand. <laughs> Uh, okay, this one isn't bad, but it's hardly the most exciting game ever. I mean, it's probably just as boring to watch as it is to play, so sorry about that. We're going now. Yeah, I suppose this one could be alright once you actually get used to controls. Oh, I'd say this probably is the best game yet. Overforce wasn't bad, but it just feels that there was not a lot happening or not a lot to actually do. Maybe I had to maybe up the difficult level and there'd be more happening. Um, I've definitely played it before. I know you can put out fires and stuff. These levels go on for a while, don't they? Oh, I've missed that one. Never mind. And finished. Hardly spectacular, but no, the game's alright, it's not bad. Okay, just when you think things can't get any worse, we've got Reversi. Um, yeah, we definitely don't need Reversi on here, but yeah, let's have a bash, maybe it's pretty good. Um, it's kind of Othello-style game. Hopefully the controls are simple. Preview, confirm. Okay, let's do it, let's play. I'm pretty sure everyone's played a game of Othello or Reversi at some point. So there you can choose, hold down the L1 button, choose whatever size board you want, press 1, 2, 3 or whatever, and press enter, then choose your players, just me. What? Interesting, won't actually let me start playing a game. Um, not sure what's going on here. Not sure if this is a flaw in the game or, or what, guys. Um, don't have a clue. Won't let me start the game. What am I doing wrong? What's on the controls? Previews. Oh, I don't know. Absolutely not got a clue. What am I supposed to press? I'm trying to press 1. Enter. One or two players. Left or right controller. Nope. Absolutely nothing is happening. Okay. Okay guys, let's go to Sharp Shot. Um, I know this is like a three game in one or something style of game. Um, what you got? Take on, oh sorry, four games. You got four games and beat 200 points in total to declare yourself an ace sharpshooter. Oh, so, there we go. We have a bargain four games in one. Use the virtual keypad to switch between the games. Game one is football passing. Game two is space runner. Game three is submarine. And game four, maze shoot. Hallelujah, this sounds great fun. Let's go for it. What we got? Shoot. Okay, one button to press shoot. That should simplify things massively. Let's go. This one's a two-player game. Uh, let's go. Hopefully it'll start. Or not. So we're starting with football by the looks of it. Okay, I guess you need to chuck the ball so that the you can get your fellow blue competitors to get a touchdown. Yeah, there we go. Completely missed. You have no control over that. All you do is just press the button at the right time when the, one of your guys is in the, in the way. And that's that's it. Yeah, that's that's really exciting. Let's try another game. Just utilising the keypad. Let's go to it. Oh, here we go. So, obviously you would usually have another player or you could connect another... Um, keypad or joypad so that you can actually play obviously on only in the VS or just press select to jump between the two controllers and you can change between what cursor you've got and um, but ideally you probably want to be playing this as like a two-player game but again it's just pretty dull you're just pressing the button trying to reach a high score but yeah pretty much unexciting let's move on to number three Um okay you're trying to take out the enemies um, pretty simple, controls okay. Yep, totally uninspiring. And four. 
take out the enemies by and stop them from getting in your base. Pressing the arrows at the right time when they're going across. Switch between the two, press and select button. Or also play two player game. Yeah, totally limited. I think we'll move on guys. I, I don't really think this is particularly great at all. <laughs> okay guys, we're kind of getting near the end, thank goodness. Um, stadium Mud Buggies. Um, yeah, another car racing game. We definitely needed another one after the other two. They're just terrible. So let's see. Anything interesting to tell me here? Open keypad, brake, reverse, tap, accelerate times two to shift up. Oh, exciting. So X and B. Let's do it. This one's from 1989. Oh, we're getting closer to the, the present here. Stadium, mud buggies, happy days. So, loads of options to choose from again. Number of players. Press enter. Oh, how tedious is this? No, oh, I want to play against the computer. Press enter. Oh, this is not fun. Now, let's just start. I just don't care about the rest of the stuff. Oh, buggy directions might actually make a difference to how this game controls. Um, Right, 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 left. I think I prefer... Let's go with three. I don't really know. Okay, start the event. Sort of utilising this virtual keypad is a little bit of a pain, to be honest. But I guess there's no way of getting round of it. Let's go. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I'm still going the wrong way. Okay, I've got the control set up just how I like it, I think, but car is, I don't know, seems to be going awful slow. What's the controls here? Um, oh, I'm doing brake, reverse, accelerate. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button, so. But I went backwards at the start there. Okay. Now we're good now. That was weird. I did press X to start and it went backwards. What in the name? <laughs> oh my god. So we need to press the X twice to accelerate when you're going up the hill. Okay, I get that. That's fine. Okay. I'm so far behind, obviously it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not going to win this race. I guess this one's not bad. It's probably better than the other two. But again, the controls are kind of all over the place. Um, yeah. And I'm struggling, I'm going to go backwards. Yeah. Nah, I think I'll need to move on, guys. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's, it's me that's wrong rather than the actual games, but I'm finding these controls and totally uninspiring gameplay to just be painful at best. Painful. Okay guys, here we go, we've got Star Strike, um, which kind of a has that kind of Star Wars-y vibe to it. Um, going through it, obviously, from the first film, as you try to destroy the Death Star, that pretty much seems like the inspiration here from 1981. Control the ship, fire the laser, drop the bomb when you get to the point near the Death Star, I guess. <laughs> Let's play. Okay, here we go. So, move up and down, take out the enemies, and just keep lasting as long as you possibly can, and then you can drop the bomb at the end. This one isn't bad, to be honest. Pretty simple, but it's not too complicated. Um, obviously, you can press that to drop your bomb, yay, that's fun. Um, you can see the closer you get, you can see the, I think it might be the Death Star coming into focus there. <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. But yeah, I obviously completely mucked it up. I need to start again. And died. Yeah, that's loads of fun. Yep, let's quietly move on. Okay, guys, if it's not going to get any more painful, here we go. Super Pro Decathlon. A button basher if there ever was one. You got action button. Run or waggle or spin, meaning you need to try and waggle that. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. And if you ever played these style of games back in the day, especially if you think of Daily Thompson's Decathlon on the Atari 2600, it was one of the most painful experiences ever for your thumb. 
Yeah, get your thing in the... Get your controller on a flat surface and just left and right like crazy. Yeah, that sounds loads of fun. So you've got 10 events in here, obviously, it's the Cathlon. And I've got a naked guy there, so let's go straight to a game. Press enter again on your virtual keypad, pressing L1. Number of players, one. Just me again. Yep, I'm certainly an amateur. I'm lucky if I'm even that. Okay, do I get to choose an event or just go straight to it? Oh, great, we're starting with a 100 meter dash. What button am I pressing? Oh, false start. A false started. So left and right like crazy on your D-pad. Yeah, that's just not going to work with this controller, is it? You need a joystick probably for this. I don't know how this would have worked on the original in television, but yeah. Oh, you are kidding me on. <laughs> oh, try again. Flipping heck, that's exhausted. Well, at least I passed. Oh, no, I don't like those type of games. <laughs> What's the next one we're going to destroy ourselves? Broad. What? Jump? Pressed X. No, I don't have the patience for this. Okay guys, so we're coming on to the cover star of the actual cartoon. Probably for me, if I recall, this is the best game on the cartoon. The one you probably would want to play most uh, for me. Um, so this is Tower of Doom from 1987. This is another one of the sort of Dungeons and Dragons style game. So without the licensing, obviously, here. Um, and this one is probably one of the only ones I would probably play on this cart again. Um, it's an action RPG style Um and it's kind of complicated, but I think, having played it in the handheld, it seems like the controls seem okay for it. But at the same time, it's still not particularly perfect. You get six levels deep, novice, tower. Um, obviously, you can change whatever one you want. Catacombs. Wow. Let's go with something like that. Select character. Does it really matter? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I think I'll just stick with the... Oh! <laughs> Look at all the different choices. Let's just go with the novice. Because that's all I am. Okay, you can see on the left hand side of the screen, they're all your different options. You'll definitely need to refer to the manual to what they all actually mean. You've got food, you've got different weapons that are there. Oh, you've got a... That looks like a portal or something that is there. Interesting. Oh! Now you can press the X to sort of, sort of battle these enemies that come across. Now, I don't. I'm not an expert in this game, so I'm not going to be able to tell you everything that actually is in this game and what it actually, how it actually works. But I know you need to basically go through each level, try and find the next level to the the tower, and just keep going to, I guess, get to the top. That's what I'm guessing. But the the levels themselves do seem completely randomly generated, um, which I suppose is good. That means it's going to be a very different experience each time you actually play the game. Um, and it, you know it seems okay. I would definitely say that this game is the best game in the cart, and probably one I would definitely come back to, um, probably in the handheld, and try and make some progress on it because it definitely seems like fun. Um, there's a, a portal, I guess, takes you to somewhere else. Um, well, no, it just turns your controls back to front. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Um, it's you know this is probably for me the better one, and it handles okay. Controls are a bit strange. I guess you want to sort of access the the side control. You press B and then use your button to select the Xbox. And I think let's see what it is. Yeah, no, it's just B button again. It's a bit confusing. Um, there, I've just dropped. In fact, I've just dropped that to not not B. I've just dropped that. Um. So let's. How do you pick things up? I'm not sure. Yeah, I need to best. So I definitely need to check with the manual how this actually controls. Um, I guess it's B to pick up and, and drop, A to select. Um, but yeah, it seems pretty good, this game. 
I think this game is definitely head and shoulders above every other game on this cart. And if you're going to buy this cart, it would be for one game. You might also like Cloud and Mountain, but for me, I don't see the fuss of that game at all. Uh, but this game is alright. It's quite rewarding, pretty random at times. Uh, but I think a lot of people will love this depth here, and they'll probably enjoy the exploration of this RPG, no doubt about it. It seems pretty decent. I think for the day, this must have been pretty, pretty cool, pretty amazing. Must have felt like a little sort of adventure that you were going on. It certainly wasn't like a lot of games at the time. It certainly made the um, television stand out from um, the Atari, that's for sure. Okay, guys, finally. Yep, finally, we're at the last game of the cart, which is Vectron. Um, this one's got... It's pretty confusing, if I recall. Um, I'm not sure, even sure how to describe what it's all about. It's a strategic shooter in which you must construct energy bases by firing at your energy block cursor. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. I think once you get the hang of it, it's probably all right. But I think if you started up, you would be totally confused and not sure exactly what you're supposed to do. Let's get started in. The number of players, yeah, we'll go for one. Okay, so what do we do here? So I need to build... Uh, so use your... Is it X and Y to move our bow? I don't know, the D-pad doesn't do a heck of a lot apart from shoot out. Yeah, this is one of those ones you definitely need to um, look at the manual for further info and even probably download the original manual to understand exactly what you're supposed to do here. It is pretty confusing. I think in first look you think I have no idea what's going on. But there's obviously as a strategy to this style of game. Um, but at this point I'm kind of a uh, I've lost the patience to actually play anymore. Okay guys so we're at that stage before I sort of finalise there is one additional secret to Unveil. So if you've got the original Intellivision Collection 1, you can actually insert it into the VS and you will unlock a secret game. Um, so both carts actually have 12 games, but if you notice at the top, it will probably come up as 25 games. Now this unleashes an extra game right at the end and it's called Zombie Madness. Uh, let's have a look at it. It's uh, obviously a totally new, I guess this must be some kind of homebrew game. Um, Zombie Madness, you use the virtual keyboard button L and R. There you go, very exciting stuff. So you basically need to save your family from the zombies, pick them up and get them to the red exits, and that's it. So let's have a quick play before we actually finalise my thoughts on this cart. So it looks kind of like the style that we've seen with um, the other homebrew game we have in Intellivision 1, which was Princess Quest, which I thought was a fantastic little game. Now yeah, let's have a bash at this. So who are we going to go? Let's go Dad. Does it really matter who you go? I do not know. Let's go. Okay, so I'm the character at the top hand of the screen. And you pick up your family, yep, and carry them on your head. <laughs> Push down on the D-pad and... You basically try and get these characters to the exit and rescue all your family from the the zombies. Yeah, then you get infected yourself. And then, yeah, you can kill your own family members just like that. And that's basically it. Pretty colourful graphics, but they are pretty basic. Oh, and there's a big zombie now appeared. Oh, no. And there you go. So either kill your family or rescue them. Depends <laughs> what you would prefer. Yeah, hardly amazing. It's nice that they included a secret game. I'm kind of surprised they didn't include the other Dungeons & Dragons game, which was I think was Minotaur. I guess that might not have emulated very well, so probably might not see that one at all. Okay guys, so to summarise... It's great that they've added a secret game. Really love that. So that's an addition. There's another 12 games here, but I think this is possibly one of the hardest carts I've had to actually play and review on this channel um, from the Evercade. I mean, obviously I wasn't a big fan of Worms, but I think I would rather play Worms than go through this again. It's hard going. The controls are really all over the place. There's a lot of issues. Um... I know they're all, obviously Blue's done their best to try and emulate these, but I just don't think a lot of them work very well at all. 
Um, I quite enjoyed the first in television collection, um, but I didn't really need a second one. This is definitely for your fans only that grew up with an Intellivision. You might also want to buy it if you like Tower of Doom, for example. It's a decent enough game. The rest of the games leave a lot to be desired. Um, I just... That was really tough to play through. And apologies if you had to go through that and watch it. I just feel... It's not for everyone. There's no doubt about it. If you're a fan and you grew up with your Intellivision, you will definitely get more out of this. But the controls are horrific. Tough to get used to. For me, I cannot recommend this car unless you grew up with an Intellivision or you want to play Tower of Doom. Other than that, I think the controls need a lot of work done to them from Blaze. There's a few bugs and issues here and there on this car. And I just had a really unenjoyable experience playing that. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you again in the next one. That was tough. Bye for now, guys. Thank <laughs> you.